Mayor Pacheco? Here. Mayor Pertem Escobar? Here. Council Member Hodge? Here. Council Member Real is absent. Council Member Hurtado? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Very good. We're going to, real quick, like adjourn the closed session. So, thank you. Okay, we're going to come back to order and uh, commence our meeting for the Calexico City Council Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Finance Authority, regular session. Call to order, please. Mayor Pacheco? Here. Mayor Pertemp Escobar? Here. Council Member Hodge? Here. Council Member Real? Here. Council Member Hurtado? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Figueroa, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Sure. Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Session announcement, Mr. Uh, Campos. We uh, met in closed session. We did receive direction, but no report of actions were taken. Thank you. Okay. No uh, prayer. No. Okay. Invocation. Approval of the agenda. No invocation. No. I'll uh, I'll approve the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can the clerk read the uh, announcement. These proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website at www.calexico.ca.gov the Friday following the City Council meeting. Mayor Pacheco will have community office hours to hear the concerns of the citizens the fourth Wednesday of the month from 5.30 to 7.30 at City Hall in the City Manager's Conference Room, 608 Heber Avenue, Calexico. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. The Mayor will recognize you, and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is on consent item, please comment now. The City Council is prohibited by state law from make, taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. Yeah, Mr. You. Mayor, I just want to highlight again for the public that um, for public comment, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Council meeting with personal slanderous remarks. So just want to make that clear. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Any comments by uh, City Council, uh, Mr. Hodge? Oh, uh, sir. Um, first. No. Um, Public comment. Oh, Public we comments. have a. I'm sorry, Mr. Ben Horton. Sorry, Ben. Mr. Mayor, distinguished members of the City Council, public at large. My name is uh, Ben Horton, resident of Calexico, Calexico Lifetime. One of the things that I'm bringing here is a little bit of economics and a little bit of understanding in reference to supporting our businesses. I have came to my knowledge that uh, we have businesses that are coming in from outside of the city selling their their wares and I'm talking about food to the kids at the high school and they I believe they have a business license but yet they're coming from outside of the city I feel that this is going to affect our restaurants because some restaurants this is the last part to help move forward 
Once upon a time, ladies and gentlemen, we had restaurants, we had restaurants. The, but then, for some reason, our restaurants started to decline. One of the reasons is they used to depend on the uh, lunch crowd from the school district, but they went to 30 minutes. So that kind of killed that. And this is something that we have to really look at to protect our business now. Once upon a time, we had a problem with tent sales, but that's been solved. The uh, resale, uh, the tax revenue, comes all to Calexico. And now the governor has signed a bill, I think it's supposed to take place in December, where people can sell food from their homes. I hope that this city council would put some protocols to make sure that the health of the city and the ability for restaurants to continue to do businesses would be something that we will look into to make sure the proper protocols are there and health permits also. That's my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Mr. Jason Jim. Mr. Young, right there, we can't use that word. You're a lie is a prohibited yeah. word, Mayor? I'm, I'm, I, if you let me finish, I will give you the, okay. the basis of it. Um, the chief said it, he forwarded a full-blown police report to the district attorney's office. I went to the DA's office this morning, spoke to, the, to one of the senior investigators, or ADAs, I'm sorry, and I asked him, hey, uh, we spoke about the case. He showed me five pages of a report. The report was entire, in its entirety five pages. But as you guys sit up here, you guys want backup to whatever's brought to you, I assume. Sustaining facts, documents that provide that information. Well, I gave that information to the PD when I filed the report. Paperwork. Probably about 30, 40, 50 pages in total. But unfortunately, the DA only had a five-page report, five pages. Yet the chief, when we were at the meeting, he had a stack of paperwork this thick. So when I say he lied to me yesterday by saying, yes, I forwarded everything to the district attorney's office, and I get there this morning, and they only have five pages, that is a lie. And that's what I'm referring to, Mayor. It's not a slanderous remark. It's a factual event. You could call the district attorney's office and ask him tomorrow. And if I did something wrong, please come after me. But I was there this morning. And I spoke to them. And I, and I had to go come back to Calexico, grab all the paperwork I had, return to El Centro to the district attorney's office, and provide them with the backup evidence or whatever you would like to call it. And when I got there to, and I spoke to the clerk, the clerk said that the only thing they received from Calexico was those five sheets of paper. This report was filed in 2015. Why was it sent on March of this year? The other thing is this, the chief said he was too busy. There were so many things going on in 2015. And yeah, there was. He was too busy suing the city, but yet he, was, he wasn't able to take care of a citizen a complainant, a victim of a crime. Why? Because he wanted to line his pockets with money? That's who you guys have as a chief right now. A person that does not tell the truth. 
I'm not. And yeah, if, if we can all address factual, is it not? If we could, yeah, if we can understand. Uh, if we can address the council as a whole. Um, and, and I am. So. And I'm saying this person that you have as a police chief, who is an individual and part of the city, and I'm addressing it to the council because they elected to put him there. Am I not right on that? So I'm addressing them and advising them. Who do they have as a chief? His actions are despicable. Because if you go back, and, and I'll put the DA's number, and I put the DA's information on my complaint that I'm going to give Mr. Dale right now, you could call him tomorrow and, and speak to him and ask him, did Jason come to you? Yes. Did, how, many sheets, how many pages was the report Calexico PD forwarded to the district attorney's office? He'll tell you five pages. It's an entirety. How can we trust a police department that is not doing their job properly if its leader is not leading properly? I know. That is you know that, that's yeah. all I'm addressing to the council right now and letting you guys know. And the only person, and there was a candidate there yesterday, Mr. David Romero. He's a witness to this. And he actually cared enough to, to come and, and sit in the meeting and see what was going on. But, you know, I mean, you know, what is going on with your, with your department? You guys said the corruption's gone. But it's obviously still there. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Young. That's all? Okay. Now we'll, we'll continue with our comments by the city council and Mr. Hodge. Okay. <clears throat> I got a, a couple of things. Um, one, one area is that I'm going to elaborate on has been gnawing at me for a while, and, and I'm not the only one that has brought, in a general sense, these concerns up. Now, we know that Calexico is a wonderful city, and it has a lot of great potential, but we still have problems that, that stop us from economic growth. Uh, problems like delays in issuing permits, uh, the permit situation. Many times developers get the runaround and permits are not issued on a specific and timely basis. Developers have waited too long for, for permits. Most importantly, the permits or the fees that we charge can be very costly compared to other Imperial Valley cities. This discourages and turns away business for future development in Calexico. They go to El Centro or the surrounding cities. Solution, some solutions. Once again, we need to do whatever we can, training, seminars, policy making, data, collecting data, comparison to other cities, whatever, but have Calexico be become more business friendly accessible to developers. Let's keep our promises. Let's expedite the permits on time. Let's lower the fees to be more competitive. Let's help Mr. Figueroa and Dale by each councilman being more aggressive in seeking out and contacting potential developers in all facets of economic growth. Now, it may not be in our job description to do that, but if we did, and did it right, we would make a huge difference. Let's sincerely work on business retention and growth. Let's listen to and respect the businesses that are here now. Let's truly have a close, productive working relationship with our Chamber of Commerce. Let's help them so that they can help Calexico. And finally, among many other concerns and issues, Let's restore to the highest efficient operation our commissions. Let's offer training. We've got to act more aggressively on our vision for Calexico. We've got to have a plan. Plan and act. Plan and act. One more. Last Saturday, I was informed by a reliable source that in the evening, Calexico only had two patrol cars officers on duty. This is unacceptable. This is a lack of public safety and service. It's a threat to police officers. 
and I heard that one officer was hurt. Took a long time for other officers to, to come. It's, it's a cause to more overtime when you're understaffed greatly. And at this present time, we have two applicants ready to be hired. And this is no aspersion on any of the city staff. They're doing a wonderful job. But this is my strong op opinion, ready to be hired, but they are not allowed to be a hired without a formal interview. And if I'm right, and correct me if I'm wrong, these two that are ready to be hired have gone through the process a while back. And I understand, uh, so we are so shorthanded, we cannot wait months on end for interviews to take place. I say bypass the formal interviews and hire them immediately. Special circumstances warrants an exception to the rule. Thank you. Oh, um, Skag, may I? Lots of things that are happening in Skag. Um, there, was on, uh, there was the 29th Annual Demographic Workshop uh, on June 11th. The theme was Lasting Demographic Impacts After the Recovery. Uh, there were different panels that, that, were, uh, that were presented. Uh, the workshop provided new insights and research on demographic changes during the recovery and what that means for the region's future. And that includes Imperial Valley, which includes housing, economy, and transportation. Focused on major component, it fo one panel focused on major components and population growth. Uh, information was presented data on total fertility rates and declined and which declined for all races and age groups during the economic turndown and have not recovered. Los Angeles County has the lowest fertility rate in Skag region. Found that interesting. Migration, which is the most volatile component of population growth, has historically been the most significant component of population growth in California. However, since the 1990s, natural increase and in parentheses, birth and death, has been the most significant contributor to population growth. By 2013, the number of births is projected to be the same as the number of deaths. So without migration or immigration, population will be static. That's one for Donald Trump. High housing costs serve as one of the primary reasons residents move out of California. Another panel, almost through, presented Middle wage jobs have not recovered even with strong economic recovery. Rents have increased faster than wages during the recovery with home prices rising ever even faster. There is a large shortfall of housing built compared to demographic demand. Most new housing is priced for more affluent residents. And I would say that this could pertain to Calexico. And it, and it just goes on and on. But uh, there were some interesting facts and uh, issues involved in that workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. Mr. Scovat. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> just uh, a few quick points. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, our mayor, uh, who uh, was uh, one of the speakers for the Bimural National project yesterday, both at the park as well as at the um, Carmen Durazo Culture Arts Center. MC was Victor Carrillo, but uh, special kudos obviously to the mural project staff and uh, obviously to Carmen Durazo who, who was not only the person that pushed it initially, but continues to push it uh, to this day. So my hats off to Ms. Durazo. I want to, uh, there's a couple events coming up and I'm sure you guys are going to discuss it in your, your minutes, so I'm going to steal a little bit of your kudos, of uh, your thunder, I apologize. Uh, w one is this Saturday, Colexo Rotary is hosting their first, I can't say first annual, it's first ever, uh, talent show. First place 300 bucks, second place 200 bucks, third place 100 bucks. So again, there's a lot of kids signed up, so it's, it's a good event for our community, it's a good event to foster um, not just goodwill, but obviously 
uh, to really push uh, uh, support for for the arts and for our for our kids. And obviously, uh, there is also on that day. There's nothing in Calexico now. We have two events same day. <laughs> Oktoberfest at Carmen Park. Uh, Rotary starts at three at, at Carmen Durazo. Uh, Oktoberfest starts at six, five, at uh, at Carmen Park, at the library. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to attend both events. Um, IBDC, uh, they're going to have their inauguration of their new offices, which are in Imperial. Uh, the grand opening is uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, uh, Calexico is an investor in IBDC, and I happen to sit on the board. I'm the treasurer. So again, uh, you're all welcome to attend. And last but not least, again, we've mentioned this before, and I'm going to keep pushing this because I think it's important that we move these issues forward uh, for our community's sake. Neighborhood Watch code enforcement volunteer program, and that doesn't need to be the title, but Neighborhood Watch, code enforcement volunteer program, and obviously adopt a park. I think we really need to push the envelope on these three issues. I think they're gonna help the community. They're gonna help law enforcement. And again, it's a way for us to come together and make Calexico work a little bit better. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Tao. With regard to the economic push that uh, Councilman Hodge mentions uh, there was last week uh, council uh, what we had mentioned that uh, in conjunction with the uh, consul of the uh, of Mexico located here in Calexico uh, there was an actual visas conference which is work visas and investment visas and it was actually attended by approximately 200 people and uh, we, there was a professional uh, attorney there that was highly skilled in visas for professionals that, uh, for example, companies here in Calexico can't find a veterinarian, let's say, and somebody wants to open up a, um, a veterinarian shop, which that's gonna come up all here in our next item, but um, uh, then we can bring talent from Mexico, and that is through lots of visas that are available through NAFTA that still exists, and uh, opportunities also for investing as far as individuals that, if you were to realize Calexico actually does have a few businesses that are um, all Mexican owned by individuals who have obtained an, an e-visa uh, as investors and it's not such a big investment, it's about $100,000 that someone would need to have to be able to open up a business in Calexico. So um, that was great information. It looks like we're gonna continue to do that because that provides a lot of people here on the border the opportunities and the tools to know what they can do with talent from Mexico. And um, that talent we all know is is a lot of up and coming young people in, in the universities in Mexicali and that professional talent is really important to keep that here because a lot of people don't want to come to live to this area because of the, the weather conditions and things like that. So I, I saw that it was very valuable, a lot of very young and uh, talented youth and uh, invested people in this area that saw that we built a new port of entry and saw that uh, there's a lot of opportunity, of course, and that opportunity, we have to invest time to be able to provide that kind of tools to them because we are remote. And these kinds of information and ideas really don't come across that easily other than you spend a lot of time in the internet. So I know that uh, the consul thank him very much for that, uh, that conference because it was such valuable information. So I really appreciate those that went. I know you were there, Mr. Moreno, um, and I hope you appreciated what that was about. Um, today, the city of Calexico had a huge, very successful health fair uh, where they provided tons of flu shots uh, in conjunction with the Heffernan Memorial Health Healthcare District today at our um, community center. So it's really important right now that everybody had had that opportunity and they were free. So thank you, Sandra, for those types of events that are really important for our community. Um, yesterday also, again, kudos to the event. I love the fact that there was so many people there, so many artists, to see this uh, monument be um, given the proper respect that it needed. There was a lot of questions out in the community who paid for this, and it was um, an organization that's a nonprofit that cares about the arts in the city of Calexico. And so we were able to put this through for the city and, and, and those that appreciate these kinds of things in, in history. Because, of course, um, uh, as a border city, we have a lot of very rich history. 
Um, I want to close off my comments by saying that uh, the month of October has been very successful in uh, breast cancer awareness. Uh, I myself am a, a survivor myself, so it's been really exciting to see so much response, especially with the events like uh, Pretty in Pink. But uh, we also have our neighbors to the south that participate quite a bit. Uh, the Aguilas Games in Mexicali this weekend, Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday, will be what we consider the Pink Games. And if anybody wants tickets, the uh, console's giving them away. They're two for one. And so we'd really like to see you out there. He's going to be throwing the first ball um, on Friday. Definitely be there. And again, um, make sure you get your exams. Thank you. <clears throat> I think everybody, uh, I think, well, the last three speakers spoke on very positive notes and uh, nice events and everything. I, 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 I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> Mayor, we, congratulations. We, 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 missed, we missed you. <laughs> but I like to be different, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about problems. Um, I, I like, I like, I think they're funner. But no. Um, I I I just I want to touch on a few things real quick. It shouldn't take long. We're 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 talking about Collectivo being open for business and progress. And um, I too am aware of um, Ben Horton's uh, issues with these uh, um, these re these restaurants that are opening. Or I think I think we need to. We're either going to be progressive or we're not. I don't I don't I don't think we can say we're going to be progressive in. Um, for example, tent sales, but we're not going to be progressive on restaurants or um, things of that nature. I think when Colexico says that we need to be open for business, you know, um, it's 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 something that's that's hard to it's a pill that's hard to swallow. Um, I I can I can tell you firsthand, uh, my father has been open in his business for 30 years, actually more than 30 years, um, and and you know, as more places open, Walmart. Pet boys, but he has a tire business. Um, does he lose business? Of course he does. It's just there is a there is a piece of of pie, and that is the you know the consumer. And the more stores open that sell the same thing, the more you just it it's it's unfortunate. But when the <laughs> when the lion kills the zebra, it's 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 just it is what it is. We we I know I know you can feel bad about it, but in in business you either survive or you don't. You adapt or you die, and as much as I know those restaurants that are saying, "Hey, brick and mortar, brick and mortar," um, you know, it, it's time to adapt. It's time to change as a city. Look at San Diego. Look at L.A. Look at Indio, Coachella, all these areas that are around us. Even Mexicali, for that matter. I mean, I, I'm here in Calexico. I mean, it's Denny's, Applebee's, or Jack. I'm like up to here. Of all <laughs> but we need we need to I, I just I want to applaud city manager assistant city manager I know it's not easy I know that um, as politicians we get those calls too hey you know this is happening but but we can't we can't take a step back if we're gonna be progressive we just need to open the doors and, and let businesses come in whether it's from outside or not I mean if they're paying a business license and they're legit and they're not doing anything legal then let them in um, I want to echo um, Mr. Hodge touched on something that was that's really important, and I've been an advocate for that since since I got on council four years ago. Um, I actually I actually got to lower our fees for a year. It was a pilot program. We lowered them to um, the amounts of uh, I think the city of El Centro. Um, our fees definitely need to be looked at. I mean, I know you guys have a lot on your plate, but um, I have so many people calling me, specifically with the ADUs right now, that they want to build ADU units, which means that the city will grow in population, which means that those people will be able to shop here or, or, or live here. Um, they're like, once, I, once we see it's almost $20,000 to do an AD, uh, ADU, they're like, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Um, I hear other cities are in the $3,000 to $5,000 range, and we're just like way up there. So you know, it's it's those things that that are extremely important that that we need to um, uh, that we need to cover. Uh, last but not least, um, another thing that I've been kind of I can't wrap my head around, but I I, I go every once in a while. I, I cross the Mexicali probably four times a week, and and the line that's happening on Imperial Avenue. I think I think it's 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 better than it was, but it's still it's still not where where we want it to be. And and my question is, 
um, why aren't we letting the cars go out to Mexico from Second Street on the west side? We have traffic control there um, and, and make the line go towards Grand Plaza um, versus backing it up on Imperial again. We have people on Imperial. You would think that the traffic on Imperial helps those businesses, it actually hurts them. They can't have people park. Um, California Market is one of them that's always, hey, hey, Mandy, what's up with the park? I, you know, it kills me. We need to get rid of that. And, and I think, you know, I see it as common sense. I mean, you, you can stand there in the middle and see traffic controllers letting people go into Mexico on one side and the other side is just empty. I mean, why not alleviate some of that from having cars go out on 2nd Street and um, on 2nd Street on both sides, if not Cesar Chavez directly into Mexico as well? I mean, um, again, I'm, I don't know, I guess if it's Caltrans or the city or the chief or ICTC or whoever it is that needs to um, take a look at this, but I can tell you that we know now, or I know now from being here long enough, that decisions made from GSA up in Washington, um, you know, they don't send their people to stand there and, 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 and see what's really, what we're actually living. They make that decision in Washington, D.C. as, oh, well, it looks good, but stand there for an hour, you know, see the, see the, the frustration five of the minutes. people, five minutes, you know, um, we need to get a hold of that. We, you know, we have traffic control that we're paying all through Imperial, spending city money, when it's not needed, that traffic control just on Cesar Chavez and Second Street can direct the traffic from all three angles and get the people out quicker. Mexico uh, is doing a great job. I've seen six lanes open at some at, at some points, and and they're um, I think they're doing their part from going from three lanes to six. Usually it's four, but um, I think that that's uh, something that really impacts us fiscally, and uh, and 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 the businesses. So um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> a couple of announcements uh, coming up real fast. It'll be the um, breakfast for the uh, yeah. our agricultural uh, uh, field workers, and that's going to be on December the seventh, from one to five a.m. And if they're uh, if you got some free time, serve tamales and frijoles and champurrado and coffee, and they'll they'll take you on to help serve on the line. And if you wish to make a donation to the chamber for the annual farm worker breakfast, that's on December the 7th, you can donate to the chamber. Coming up real fast also in this, this month, October 25th, we're going to receive a reception for the new San Diego State President, Adela de la Torre. And they'll be at the loft in El Central. And that's October 25th at 11 o'clock to 1. We're being invited to the Centinela State Prison. Come join us for the anniversary tours. I guess, Chief, that's for you. Uh, 25th, that's October the 30th, if you want to make the uh, tour. And we have a little invitation from the Heber. They're having a little, uh, El Octubre 27, Tito Huerta Park. They're going to have a little jog, walk, 5K. Fiesta, desfile, uh, talent shows, caminata. So that is on the 27th of this month also. So a lot of, a lot of things coming up for us. Anything else for, uh, I think that's it. Mr. Dale or Mr. Figueroa, who wants to go first? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just have a few things. Uh, the fee study that was referred to earlier, we, I do have it on my list of things on my board in my office. Uh, we know it's a desperate need. Um, I get about 10 to 15 percent of my time. I estimated today as proactive. I consider it proactive, but that is on my list to do, and uh, we'll get to that as soon as we can possibly get to it. We just need to put together an RFP requ request for proposal. Uh, Measure D project. This year's Measure D project w is is almost complete we got all the con concrete completed and that's the hard part and now it's time to do the asphalt so you're going to be seeing a lot of streets in the next week uh, starting to be ground and overlaid so we have a lot of good things happening on the measure D project all those streets that we showed before they're going to be paved some some people have been when is my street going to get paved when is it it's going to get paved in the next month so uh, that that's uh, going on right now 
and just to give you an update on that, and the Cesar Chavez project is moving forward and it's going well and it's on schedule. So everything is looking good there. I'd like to uh, go ahead and give it over to the Assistant City Manager. Um, I, I just want to acknowledge and thank uh, the council members that attended our Cannabis Community Forum um, that we had here in the chambers. Um, like it was um, uh, sold to the community it was an informative session in which we wanted to be transparent as to what the state of California permits, what the city of Calexico is allowing based on the ordinances that were approved in July of 2017, and the economic impact that it brings uh, to a city like ours. It also gave those attendees the opportunity to learn about what's going on outside of Imperial County when it comes to that industry in the state of California. Uh, so again, thank you for those that took the time to attend. Um, go, uh, uh, touching on, on one of the items that, um, that Councilman Real rightfully brought up with regards to the wait time to exit into Mexico during those peak hours. Um, today, actually, um, we, myself and the Public Works um, admin manager had a conversation to address um, the issue and what it would take to make sure that we can make that right turn during peak hours um, going from west to east on, 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 west, on, on 2nd Street. Um, uh, the, the police chief um, has also been informed and has provided his feedback as to um, what it would take on us as a city administration to make that happen. I do want to share that we are going to take the proper measures um, there are some things that need to happen for us to make that uh, occur for the community, but it's, it's, it's overdue, we understand, we've witnessed it. And I do wanna say that um, within the next, I'm not gonna commit as to an exact date because um, it's not only on us, but um, I will be providing updates not only here at the city council meetings, but also through email correspondence to the city council because we expect this to occur within the next weeks so we can alleviate that in addition uh, to the traffic that we're going to be getting in the in the time of the season that's coming up. Let me just add, let me just add that, and and aside from the traffic coming for Black Friday and Christmas and everything, and and just the businesses hurting in general in Prill Avenue because of that, this is this is also a safety issue. We have, um, you know, God God forbid somebody has a, a a heart attack on, you know, the that that west side of town. Guess what? That ambulance has to cross Imperial. Guess what? There's issues. Why? Because I saw, I mean, I see people, they get the green light, and I mean, they'll stop the whole intersection. Like, they'll go, like, oh, like I'm next. I don't care. You know, it, it turns green to go straight, and there's a line of people right in front of you. You're like, what's going on? You know? Um, and how the ambulance going to get through that? How's the fire department going to get through that? I mean, police have cars. They can go around, but um, an ambulance isn't as easy. So, you know, I think since the beginning, somebody dropped the ball there, but that's fine. As long as we fix it. Um, I think it's important so that we get that 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 those people out of uh, the city fast. Absolutely, that's a point well taken, Councilman. Um, we are actually addressing some public safety matters, so we can make that artery viable during peak hours. So, by doing so, we'll be able to open that. My last comment has to do uh, with the Opportunity Zone program um, that uh, is available for future investors. Um, and existing businesses um, that uh, reside in the city of Calexico. Um, this is one of the economic tools. I mean, uh, Councilman Hodge touched on it. I believe Mr. Escobar did as well. Um, th th this is low-hanging fruit that we, as bureaucrats here in the city, need to do a better job in educating those that are out there looking to invest their monies. I mean, um, the city of Calexico is privileged um, to have um, in, I, I would say about 65% of its of, 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 of within the city um, the, have, have um, the opportunity to be um, labeled an opportunity zone, which provides a number of incentives that have that has to do with 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 tax opportunities, tax deductions, among many other things. Um, and as a matter of fact, because we need to make sure that here in Imperial Valley we implement this program for the betterment of the whole valley, not only Calexico. Um, we need to make sure that we stay on top of the game when it comes to this program. There's going to be an important forum November 15th 
um, in the neighboring city of San Diego in which I feel it's going to be important that us as a city voice how we feel this is going to impact future investment coming to our city. Um, and um, I'll be sharing more as, as, as future meetings come about. Um, but I do want to say that these are the creative opportunities that we can implement here because they're a, they're a, a hand reach away for getting them done and enticing outside business to come to town. Just a quick comment be on, on the subject before, which was the, uh, the port of entry that Mr. Real touched upon as well as yourself. Uh, and uh, again, we know Thanksgiving, Black Friday is coming up very soon. We know Christmas time gets very, very, very hectic at both ports of entry. We don't control the east port of entry, but we do control the west port of entry to a certain extent. I would take it a step further and uh, uh, either create a NAHA committee or just actually have a meeting. Sometimes a few more minds are better than, than a few minds. And I think it's important that we get it right and we get it right this, this one time. If we screw it up, it's going to adversely affect November and December. And we don't want that to happen from a uh, retail sales perspective, from a traffic perspective, from an accident perspective. I think we really need to get it right. And right now we're getting it wrong. So again, uh, it I behooves suggest, us. It behooves us. It behooves us to get together as a team and get this done right. <laughs> and again, today, tomorrow, the day after, we need to get it done now. <laughs> Mr. Deal, can't we invite Caltrans? Can't we invite other entities to come on in and take a look at this and not just make it our decision, but a decision that's going to be a workable decision along those lines with those type of people that are engineers and. Right, well, the, the traffic situation that it is there now has been put in place by a number of engineering firms and Caltrans and ICTC and, and between us. Uh, did, is it correct? I mean, I, you know, that's a, is a matter of opinion, I guess, but uh, we can bring them back and we can, t we can express the concerns the council has, has brought to our attention and, and can it be better? Probably. Who, when, we had, when we had those meetings, who was present at those meetings? So Caltrans provided a grant uh, approximately five months ago, I think, in the amount of $80,000 in which where they hired an engineering firm to study this, they came out and did traffic counts and they, and they this is a traffic firm, this is what mm -hmm. they do. And so we- they Post, po uh, prior, I'm sorry, prior new border though, not post. Prior, while, prior before, okay. before anything was- So they, they, they've never been here uh, Black Friday, no, 2017, and they were paid eighty thousand dollars, and seen the line going all the way to Heber, right? They've right. never seen that. Okay. But if you can <laughs> invite them again to come and look and see the actual traffic, if they can stand on the corner of. Second Hopefully Street. Friday night at around 6 p.m. That would yeah. be. They're, that. they're actually they're contracted to do yeah. that, so that's part of that's the contract. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That'll that'll give us a a, a better uh, recommendation coming from them and from us. Right. Okay. Mayor, I have one last uh, thing to ask. Uh, okay. this, the, the just speaking of the, the Chamber of Commerce, but I, I actually, um, I passed by the Chamber of Commerce today, um, and I saw, I, I was wondering, the I was looking at the Oktoberfest, and then on the next sign I saw um, uh, a, a person that I know um, advertising. Is that, is the city, my question is, does the city advert, charge to advertise there? Um, is that, I know it's city property that the Chamber um, is, is, I guess, l we lend them that property for free, but um, I, my understanding is those signs are paying rent to someone. Is that to the chamber or to the city? And secondly, the person that's advertising on there is advertising for the city of Imperial to, for, to buy new homes in Imperial. I'm like, how, how, why is that on our chamber's building in the first place? And, and that's a city property. Why would the city be advertising for people to buy homes at Imperial. Um, if we can get down to the to the bottom of that, that I think that would be that would be great. The bulletin Thank you. Board, the bulletin board? Yeah, yeah. billboards. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Consent agenda, items six, seven, and eight. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor of approving six, seven, and eight? Aye. 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 Pass. Thank you. Potential items. Number nine, little report here on general fund un unaudited financial results. I'm going to watch it from, 
from the good seats over here in the front. Slovatos, welcome. We had promised back in June when we presented our 1819 budget, we said we would bring in October a preliminary uh, statement on how we're doing for 1718 and also as a first quarter report. So, as we, and we're still working through these numbers, uh, for year 1718, we are 14, at 14.9 14 million on revenues, which is about 2% um, increase on our s revenues compar compared to prior year and compared to budget. Um, the main source of revenue for um, the city is sales tax, and this year the state of California was impacted by delays during their implementation process. Um, our general fund expenditures for 1718 were 14.6 million. Could you drop it down a little, Sandy, please? Um, which is reflecting a strong expenditure control, which we continue to have, even as of today. Um, however, 1718 expenditures did exceed the 1718 budget for um, in the amount of 149,000. Um, two areas of concern for 1718 were traffic control, temporary staffing, as well as um, outside legal counsel for police department, which we already know. Um, we did have a grant for traffic control, but again, our expenditure exceeded what we had budgeted for. Um, as of now, we're trending um, our general fund for a loss uh, or a deficit of $72,000, which is slightly higher than what we had predicted in the past, but um, I think we're still on a good trend compared to where we were a few years ago. Um, we're dropping $4 million of annual costs since 2014, uh, uh, 15, and 15, 16. Um, so if you had a chance to look at the report, um, this is where we stand right now. This is just general fund. We will, we will continue to work on other funds and um, <coughs> look at our alternatives to close the gap. Um, since we started in 1718, our budget, we had a gap of $3 million. As you can see, our gap has closed significantly, and it is right now at $72,000. Again, we continue to explore alternatives to close the gap. Um, we're still working through them, and we will continue to work on all the other funds. We are expecting to finish closing our books by de early December, um, and we expect to have our outside auditors come in, come on side by early January. Um, and this, again, these are unedited financials. Um, we will have audited financials, we're hoping, by March of next year. When do we get the actual quarterly sales tax coming in? Um, when do we? What month? In January, February, March, April, May, right. June. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is this will be the third? This would be, and they go, like us, um, they have their fiscal year is start since uh, July, August, September, then that's the first quarter, and we see the money come in the following month. Mm -hmm. So um, we're seeing money's come in now. Um, again, uh, it's not as expected, but we're trending on a good note. Um, so for 1718, we are on track. We're working through it again. We're exploring alternatives. Um, hopefully, we can close the gap. I'm optimistic we can, but again, I'm looking at um, exploring the alternatives. Now for our first quarter report, 18-19, um, um, we do have some, uh, I guess, negative notes. Um, we do have about 185,000 loss of revenue as we stand right now. I mean, I know our city manager, assistant city manager are working very hard on bringing new revenues. 
So I am optimistic this gap is going to close. And as we continue to control our expenditures, um, we, I, I'm pretty sure we can close our year on a good note. As you can see, as we stand right now, we are trending to have a loss of $18,000 by the end of 1819, which is significantly lower than what we had in the past few years. So um, with that in mind, um, I have some notes here if you want to look at it, um, or if you have any questions, please feel free to. Well, we've come a long way from three million to <laughs> $72,000, 72, por favor. That's, uh, you've done a great job, Mr. Dale and Slovatos and Mr. Figueroa, narrowing uh, uh, that deficit uh, budget really, really well. And we're continuing to work with the budget, I know. We continue, I mean, we work on our budget every single day of the week. We're keeping track of expenditures, trying to look for new sources of revenue, and um, I mean, I think it's, it's, this is um, our great city manager, assistant city manager, as well as our council members. I know you have helped a great deal. Um, this is not an easy job for any of you, any, anybody, but we continue to trend on a positive track. So I'm very hopeful that this is gonna, 1819 is gonna look very, very good. She keeps us in line, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They don't like me that much when I say no to their request, but. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or any the? Questions? Uh, uh, two questions. No. <laughs> two, two, uh, two questions. Sure. Uh, on the wastewater advance, uh, I do see that uh, under operating capital costs, we have 742,554. So I'm assuming that we take away from the 2.141466, or am I incorrect? No, that is I'm correct. correct. So my number is 1.398912, 1,398,912, not 1,452,741, which in this case would be positive for Calexico by about $54,000. Is am I wrong in that number? Because I did it twice. I just want to double check that. Which it'd be good for us if, if, if I'm right and, and the numbers right. are wrong. Right. But yeah, he's, he's right. Right. Or there's other variables besides this there's, number. There's other variables okay. that are not okay. shown here. The other one, do we have a, uh, on traffic control and legal fees, do we have numbers? I didn't see these uh, disclosed in the, uh, in the write up, or They're I missed not, them. But I, can, um, I don't think they are here. But I can definitely look into them if you. And are those included in these numbers? They are. So they're not necessarily recurring? Temporary staffing and? No, 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 no. Traffic control and legal fees. They are recurring expenses. Variable, though. And those would be under operating co under costs, operating correct? Under operating costs, correct. OK. They would be under contracts and professional services. And I can definitely prepare a more detailed report if you would like to see something. Yeah, I just, I just want to get the disclosure. More legal fees and traffic control, but because okay. they're lumped together, it'd be interesting. And then just the confirmation of the, uh, again, if it's positive right. for us, that's great. If it's just uh, additional, uh, uh, an additional f or additional figures, I would like to know what they w what they are. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, if if the TOT passes, if the TOT passes November the sixth, mm -hmm. it would generate again how much for us extra? Was it a 30, thirty two thousand? Thirty seven thousand. Yeah, ballpark figure is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's what I kind of remember. W one more question. Yep. Uh, actually. 1A and 1B, sorry, okay. 1A and 1B. <laughs> Ambulance fees, uh, where do we stand on, on that project, Mr. Dale? Do you want to address that? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we're looking into that. Um, we have started to see some of those new revenues come in. They're not at the rate we were expecting them to see. So I'm working with Shape of Fire to look into that. We're 
again, exploring alternatives on how we can bring in more money for ambulance fees. And potentially hiring another third party for billing or bringing it in-house, correct? Correct. Okay. That is correct. And what about the alarm uh, study? I've, I've heard a lot of talk about that. And That's yes. the chief. Police chief, and we're actually have a meeting in December, correct? Right around the corner. Uh, good evening. So the uh, good news is that the companies on board to do the arm billing and today, uh, Chief Favila and myself, since we're doing a joint venture and redoing our, our alarm fees for false alarms, uh, we, we spoke over the phone with Tom Burton, which is with Wilden and Associates, the one that did the fee studies. The set, we were planning on bringing it to the, on December, the first week, the first meeting in December, uh, for you guys, uh, so you guys can approve the fees uh, that we're doing. So we are providing them with all the numbers that they need uh, from benefits and salaries to cost of running in a police uh, patrol car, how many officers it takes to respond to uh, burg residential burglary, residential robbery, commercial, schools. So we actually were on the phone for two hours with them today. So December is the date that we will bring it on to you with a start date of July, uh, January 1st. We, we, we just need to have the fees uh, present it to you guys so you guys can approve it. Thank you. And, and on the ambulance fees, when are we going to get an update based on your new insight? We're looking into that. We have been reviewing that. Fire Chief and myself have been working on it. Um, it does take a little bit longer than expected. I do have enough knowledge on health care um, fees that I can look at some of it. Um, we looked at some of the codes. It looks to me like we need to have more detail. Um, um, I don't want to say any more on that. No, the, the reason we're, the we're expecting to work on that by, or bring it back to you maybe towards the end of November, maybe December. Maybe. And the reason why I bring it up is, is a few months ago we were discussing obviously the adjustments and the potential for increased services going from one Calexico Fire Department provided ambulance to two Calexico provided amb ambulances as well as one Gold Cross. In other words, we'd go from two ambulances to three. Correct. And I think from a community perspective, obviously it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Obviously from a financial perspective, it needs to make sense as well. But again, it, it sorry Mandy, where's Mandy? Mm -hmm. I don't guess if I, it behooves <laughs> us to, uh, to move forward on that. So right. mm. thank you. Yes. Mr. Dale, were you also, were you going to look at the possibility of the billing for the ambulance services that we're getting the right rates or, or that we're doing the correct billing? That's a major component of this, yes. yes. I mean, it's all <laughs> part of, I mean, it's not only the rate, it's our billing, it's our collection. So we're looking at all of it as just one issue yeah. and fire chip and myself are have been working on it. It's just taking longer than expected and there's so many other issues that need to be taken care of that um, we need to we need to do that. Absolutely. Good. I'm just curious. Um, it says traffic control Grant County. Right. And then it says 125,000 grant not awarded. Right. Why was that? It, it just didn't work out. It just uh, didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure why they didn't get awarded that grant. Just didn't work out. Yeah, it did. yeah, it didn't work out as we expected. So we're still not rich. Not there okay. yet. We will I, be. Okay. Well, it's better than okay. It's better than nine million. In the hole. That's that's yes, all absolutely. I can say. <laughs> Times have changed. Times have changed. We're, we're making progress. One, yeah, thank you very much. One thing, um, just one comment um, that I know has been brought to the council several times before, um, and I, I've always thought it's a good idea, but um, uh, the the possibility of either hiring a grant writer or working with an outside grant writing firm. Um, it seems to me that we, we um, I mean, I see other cities getting all these grants and it's like we're just kind of like, you know, we get some. I know, I know we get some, uh, um, uh, some housing grants and stuff like that, but I'm talking about a firm 
or hiring somebody that that can be very aggressive um, towards you know uh, grants that the city to the north are getting uh, that we're not getting um, and and I you know it, it seems to me that we have way more need than they do um, and so there's maybe really look into city manager assistant city manager look into the possibility of, of doing something like that no that, that's that's one of the basic elements that this city needs to address um, some of the shortfalls that it has experienced we're, 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 there's there's different tiers of grants um, th th there are just some what some people call in local government automatic grants CDBG which is just because you have just because you have the the demographics and the numbers you get them mm -hmm. this city has not even been privileged to get those monies in recent years mm -hmm. um, so I mean it's 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 been a the the, the great effort of, of staff as I think mr. Dale and I have acknowledged in previous meetings of staff that have just stepping up and, and done part of that but now we're getting to the point where, where, where some of these essential grants are going to start to flow in and 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 some of the community development projects that you rightfully mentioned um, um, will begin to be seen in Calexico not, not, not to say not to say that that suffice um, but but what what we're working hard as is just getting up to par so we can not only be competitive with those grants but with the big ones, which I'm sure the ones that, that we all want to see come down. And, and I know it's, I, I mean, nobody more than me or anybody up here or staff uh, knows how frustrating it is that, you know, the city, you know, we've taken the city in the last four years from, from the brink of bankruptcy and, and we've stabilized it, but we're not growing. And that's our, that's, we're stagnant. We need to grow. We need to be progressive and, 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 and going back to these, these, these grants, you know, um, they're important. They, they, they get you that, you know, they give you that step. And I, I was reading an article not too long ago, um, about, um, and I, and I thought to myself, I said, I, I'm, I'm almost positive that, uh, San Diego state has a, uh, uh, not just a master's in public administration, but a master's in business administration. Um, and I saw, I don't want to say the name of the place because I, I know it was in, in uh, Nevada, so I don't know if it was UNLV or exactly what university it was, but the master's program actually was helping the city write grants. And so, you know, I know we don't have the money to hire staff. I know that it's, it's tough, but why not reach out to that MPA program uh, uh, in San Diego State and say, hey, would you, you know, is there any way that this could be a, a yearly thing where you guys you know, um, get your, 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 your classes ready to graduate and say, hey, you know, the class is gonna write this grant for the city, uh, work with the city in conjunction, and, and not just, you don't just kill, you, the, you kill two birds with one stone because you can write the grant and hopefully you get it and they learn, but at the same time, you might even be able to hire some people from there that you say, this, this guy's smart, we should probably look at bringing him on board. Um, again, just thinking outside the box, you know, revenue, we need to increase revenue, we're working, you guys have done a great job with, with um, the budget as far as not spending. And that's, and that's great, we're keeping, we're, we're working within our budget, but the growth can't happen because there's no money there. So we need to think outside the box, San Diego State, IVC, I mean, you name it, even uh, hiring a private firm or something like that, I'm just saying to, to, to get us, we all know where we're going, we all know where we wanna be. Um, I, I, I always say it's taken 20, 30 years to get us where we are now, and it might take us that long to get where we're gonna go in the future, but if those little things can help us get there faster, then you know, it behooves us to uh, ask more. To, um, okay, to any other questions for Ms. Lovatos? So. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking healthier. We see pink on our cheeks now. <laughs> Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim, I'm, I'm, we'll allow you to speak, Mr. Kim. Number we're not eating steak here. We're on Maru Chan still, but we're. Yeah, still and also, too, on the uh, comment on the, uh, the agenda <laughs> items, I want to remind folks to submit those at the beginning of the agenda item so that we, we can, we can, um, we can, we can uh, yeah. um, hear those at the beginning. One guy. Mr. Kim, three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council members, 
I believe our budget tonight is uh, tonight the presentation was okay. worse. Like before the thanks. People would understand would not understand. Sure. Even you guys. First of all, we, we rather have some PowerPoint there so people can see differences of where we are standing. If they don't show up in the PowerPoint. Besides that, when you see the uh, budget, 17, 18, they supposedly almost closed the book because uh, now, it's December, uh, now it's October. They closed the book, actual, uh, actually, uh, un unedited, actually, supposedly come. Uh, it looks like they come. But what happened, 18, 19, which is uh, 18 July, September, October, we spend it. We don't have it here. We only only adding the number or or the subtracting number of total, but how much we've been budgeted, how much we spend, it doesn't show up. So you guys, are, oh, we are doing good, but what? We don't know what's been done in the last three months at least till September. We should know. She should know how much we spend, how much we budgeted. How much money left over from the budget? We don't have that. Yes, as I believe that we are in the still in trouble, we should be very conservative to our budget. And uh, what about the others? Only uh, general ones. What about our project money, enterprise ones? We supposed to have all the all the together supposed to have today. Not only general funds. We not only to run for the city general fund only, our city enterprise fund, all the funds are supposed to be here today, as actual, uh, uh, honored as actual for the 17, 18. And we are supposed to have what we spend today, or even other, other areas. So please, as a, our duty is, council members' duty is for the communities to do working for the community's benefit. And we need to have council members supposed to be focusing on it to watch over to what we're doing it. I believe with this number, it's not gonna show in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, can I make a quick comment? Um, I, I, and I'm not trying to get political here. I, I'm not running for city council, um, but um, other people are. It is, it is, it is absurd and, and, and really frustrating to know that someone can be up here for years and not know that a city's budget always runs months behind because, um, you know, property taxes come in quarterly, uh, uh, sales tax comes in quarterly, and the city's bills aren't paid. As soon as the bill gets there, it takes time to pay them. It takes time for companies to charge a city. It takes months. And so you're always working three months in the in the in the unknown zone. Um, so again, I, I, it's not that I'm protecting our finance director or our staff, but that's a reality. People that that are watching this, please understand. When people come up here and say things, um, you know, it's 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 not it, it's, it's almost it's almost ABC in city finances that you know that it's you're always behind, and so um, we're not behind. We know what's going on in these. Numbers are, to the best of our knowledge, the truest numbers that we can show. So, just if I may, also, Mr. Mayor, this 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 item was intended to give us an overview of the general fund for the last fiscal year. It's not; it's unaudited. It's it's correct. It's just this is what our finance department came up. So we we do plan to bring the next council meeting the current status of this year, but we were not prepared to this meeting to do that. That's fine. Thank you. Mr. Peroni, Alex, 511 Heber, representing himself. Looks familiar. From where? <laughs> honorable Mayor, Honorable City Council, uh, City Manager, Assistant City Manager, and City Attorney, and Gabby. I haven't got come up here in a while, so. Uh, you're, you're, you're getting acclimated yeah. again. Okay, uh, you know, touching on the budget. Uh, Mrs. Escobar, is that the name, or? Novatos. Or Novato, Novato. Uh, I commend you. In a few years, I haven't seen uh, 
people giving the reports you're giving and a transparent one. And uh, I still uh, advise the city, you, you need to watch your professional services. A lot of money is going there, uh, a great percentage of your budget. So not to scare you, Mr. City Attorney, but uh, you know a lot of, uh, maybe it's time to bring in a full-time attorney, uh, maybe a full-time engineer saving us money. And uh, going back, uh, you know, our budget is all economics. And uh, this is uh, city manager and uh, assistant city manager. Economic development. You guys have forgot about it. You know, you should bring a damn uh, used car salesman in that department. Sell Calexico left and right. And you know what? These men sitting up here, they're for policy only. You're supposed to have action. When you see economic development, you got to go to Los Angeles, San Diego, New York, Chicago, and tell them about Calexico. Tell them about our labor force. Tell them about cheap water, cheap power. That's what they need to know. So we need to start bringing in money through economic development. And you know, we were talking about traffic. I agree with you, Mandy. This is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Caltrans don't give a shit about us. They destroyed my pop property over there on Highway 98. All they want to do is finish what they got to do. They don't care. So get with the people that did this little study, the $80,000 study, and talk to them. They, you know, Calexico is not a bunch of hillbillies. There is people that uh, <laughs> we, we do work and traffic is very important to us. So they need to know that. This wouldn't happen in El Centro any other city. So on, on grants, that's bringing in revenue. Again, city manager, assistant city manager. These are policy people. You guys make a move, bring somebody in performance-based. You know, they bring in a grant and they brought so much money, give them 50%, who cares? It's money that didn't come to the city. So bring in somebody performance-based. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bernie, thank you. I have a question for the translator. Oh, How do you translate hillbilly? I'm just <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Benjamin Horton. What happens when you let one guy speak? Floods open. There you go. Ben Horton. I'm going to say something. With all due respect, Mr. Real, I kind of take issue in reference to the grant. I think you remember when you and I went to Yuma, mm -hmm. to northern Arizona, and they were willing to come to mm -hmm. Calexico free of charge yeah. to help me write grants. When it came, we had a meeting with the economic, they gave a presentation how they could write the grants and also help with the, the finance department. When it came time to set up our agreement, the city said no. Mm -hmm. I remember that. The city said no. And they were going to do it free of charge. They had their business department that was willing to come in and write grants for the city, no cost. When I had a meeting, they gave a presentation how they had their business, they had their doctor, a business department that was an expert on writing grants. And then when it came time to it, the city, the city manager at that time, wouldn't even allow it to come to the city council. Yeah. And I rode with Mandy to Yuma. That's why I take issue. When it comes time to have a chance to make things better, for some reason, I guess the city has Alzheimer's. They'll lack on it, and they said no, and that makes me upset. And if I don't, if I if I recall correctly, it wasn't just grant writing; it was uh, it was a uh, uh, incubator program as well. And, and, we, and, and me and Ben went all the way to Yuma on a motorcycle. And he was in the back. He was on the back. When they wanted to do something like an MOU, <laughs> the city said we will not do it. It wasn't going to cost the city anything. But now, the city is willing to pay money to have somebody to do it that w where you would have a university to come in with their professionals to do it. And I even tried to regenerate that when a new council came in. It wouldn't happen. It's, uh, not this city manager or this team. Maybe it's time to look at it again. Well, you know, we could talk to him about it. And it was Dr. 
Mike, Mike Savitt. Mike Savitt. He had this idea. He's the president at the University of uh, Northern Arizona University. And these are professional doctors, not just somebody that says, I can do it. These are doctors, professional, PhD type. And they were going to bring their whole team. It was going to be a project for the, for the students to work with the city of Calexico. It was going to be a project, something that we could all be proud of. And uh, I, w I was so proud when I brought it to the, They came to the economic. They made a presentation. I was ready to send it up to the city council, and they said no. And that kind of gets me upset. Thank you, Mandy, for bringing it up. I was sitting there remembering everything that I did to try to move this forward, and they said no. New day, though. New council, new staff. Well, Maybe now it's the time to bring it well, up Well, we can bring it. We can, I can give them a call, but I think the direction should come from the, uh, the city manager and assistant city manager. Because if I call, they're going to say, here's Ben again. Yeah. And it, it kind of like, sounds like a broken record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Moving on, item number 10. Waive the first reading for ordinance of the city council of the city of Calexico prohibiting <coughs> persons from feeding feral cats. Mr. Dale. We've had multiple complaints about uh, cat issues. Uh, we, ha we do have a cat issue and um, we, we stopped picking up the cats in animal control because the feral cats cannot get really get adopted and what ends up happening is they get euthanized. So we're trying to avoid that if possible. Um, we really can't afford a, the, the fancy TNR program. I'd be happy to entertain if any groups wish to uh, volunteer in that regard. But uh, to, in response to these co uh, con considerations and these um, complaints, we uh, requested BBNK, our city attorney, contract city attorney to um, draft an ordinance uh, against feeding the feral cats that will uh, hopefully help stop the population explosion of the cats uh, for now. It's not a, it's, it's at least a small step towards uh, the uh, population control. Is there going to be a fine if somebody says, hey, my neighbor is constantly doing this and, and what does that amount to? If they're caught, there is a fine. Do you remember what it was? You know, it, it cites the uh, fines it's that are established in your the, in the ordinance. The rest of your your code, municipal code. Yeah. I don't have that specifically. Yeah, with I don't. Me. Yeah, I was. And and I think as, as the city manager mentioned, I think that the uh, idea here is to, to this be a more of a deterrent. Um, I don't think the city is looking to penalize folks, but I think the idea is to try to deter them from um, this activity, which is creating a lot of public health and safety issues. I can give you the specific number later on. A That's motion fine. to. Um, Any more discussion on this topic? To approve this item. Mm -hmm. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 11. City Attorney. We have a sp speaker on that one? No, we need to read the title. I think we did, yes. right? No. For 10 or 11? 10. Didn't we read it? Yeah, we read it. I think you did. Yeah, yeah. you did. Introduce and waive first reading of the ordinance of the City Council of the City of Calexico prohibiting persons from feeding feral cats. Item 11, introduction and waive first reading of an ordinance of the City Council adding Chapter 1.28 of Title I of the Municipal Code to recover cost and attorney's fees and nuisance abatement matters and amending Section 126.180. Um, I all I can say is about time, and thank God this is something that um, I know I've been uh, with Words Ralph. He left, but oh, here's uh, this is this, this is something we should have had on there 20 years ago. I don't know why it hasn't been on there, but whatever. Uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's here. Um, I think it's uh, uh, extremely important because it's going to beautify the city. We, we're putting. We have a lot of. Uh, landowners and property owners that aren't from here and they don't give a uh, darn about how the city looks and 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 you know this gives us the opportunity to um, go after them for 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 having these eyesores all over the city and 
I think it's a, uh, it's, I'm just that it's here. So I motion to approve it. Mr. Morales, any any comment yeah. on the item? He yeah. said everything I was going to say for the most part. Yeah. But basically, what, what what happens right now is that any property that's deemed as a nuisance and uh, staff goes out there and they do the work to clean it up, then the the charges or the fees that are charged to the property owner can only be done from the staff, either whether code enforcement, police, fire, those are the only fees that can be charged to the property owner. With this ordinance uh, being put in place, then the time that the city attorney spends in uh, going to the court, uh, uh, getting the necessary documents from the court and the uh, assistance that they give, that time can be charged to the property owner, and that's something that we need to put in place because it becomes very costly to the city when the uh, city attorney assists, and, and we do need their assistance in, in when we go after these type of uh, property owners. Okay. Is questions? there a lien? Is there sorry? Is there a lien placed on the property? There's a lien, and, and basically what we do, it'll be a tax lien, uh, so that when the uh, taxes come due, then that's part of the uh, uh, payment that they have to make. Thank you. I make a motion to approve item 11. Is there a second? I, think I made the, well, yeah, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Kim, item 12. Last time I, I, I against it, but the leased out, contract out. Now city does, does again. It's a lease for the private business they can use as expenditure so they don't have to pay taxes. That's why they're saving the money from there. <coughs> but public entities, we are, why we have to lease? When we buy, we can use years with a good maintenance. We have our, our employees. We're supposed to do that. And our areas here, very high rate of un unemployment. And city supposed hire employees not using time, uh, time workers. We should have we should have employees with uh, their paycheck and benefit. They can be loyal for the community. They can be loyal for the, their job. But we're not doing it. We're using a lot of laborers. They lease, lease out, contract out. It's something, something wrong here. We suppose the uh, city is supposed to save the job for our community, not lease out. And our asset, as a public asset, not your guys' asset. You guys, if you can, do whatever you want. But money you throw away, five years later, good, ex bad expenditure, we still have to pay for nothing. We're not gonna have nothing left over. Why not contract our city manager, city official shop? Or maybe in the future, we might have to contract out the city council position too. And council, have to do their job right. As council again attacking the uh, public members here to say uh, public opinions, their opinions, they should not attack that. Yeah, but you can, we can get back to the item regarding the lease. The yes, the that's why a council the member using it to that to attacking the public. So please think about our community not for the outside the business to coming in to make the money to with us, contracting out, is lease, that's not helping for the collection code. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, uh, items 12 and 13 are to lease vehicles. My uh, relative is saying. Could we, could we approve uh, 12 and 13 at the same time? We need to take these at one at a time, Mr. Campos, or? Uh, we could, we could uh, 
take them together if, if that's a will of the council. I make a motion to approve 12 and 13, authorize same manner, you sign a, a master equity lease agreement and related maintenance agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management Inc. for a period of 60 months for a vehicle lease program. And 13, authorize city manager to sign a master e equity lease agreement and related maintenance agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management Inc. for a period of 36 months for a vehicle lease program. Second. I, I second opens the discussion. I just have one quick question. Um, is this is this are we using enterprise the local uh, one here in El Centro or are we going directly through enterprise corporate uh, I believe this is enterprise corporate if I'm not mistaken yes. okay mm -hmm. all right uh, aye all those in favor aye aye, aye. just is um, I don't I know this wasn't something that went out for RFP but is there do you foresee any any way in the future that possibly a local firm can can bid on on these contracts yes we can, we can do that okay i know there is some enterprise now central budget hurts there's i mean maybe we can give yep. the local guys a shot item 14. authorized city manager to sign change order number one with pyramid construction and aggregate inc in the amount of $247,920,000 for Cesar Chavez Improvement Federal Aid Project number HPLUL 5168017. Mr. Dale. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, so, you know, we've been getting direction from the council over the past months to look for any opportunity to increase the aesthetics of the city. I think we have one here. Uh, we're proposing to uh, install decorative street lights, street lights along Cesar Chavez, and we're, uh, we're proposing to increase the number. We're also proposing, as part of the, the street lights, to install the banner bars so that we can install uh, banners as, as, as needed, and they're very decorative. So uh, we're bringing this to council for your consideration. The funds come from the grant uh, funds that we had uh, um, discussed previously. We have the uh, federal grant, we have SB1, SB1 and Measure D. Well, okay, any discussion on that? So it's going to help beautify and lighten yes. up the area and make it look really nice and an entryway into uh, yes. our border. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's long overdue and we need to do more aesthetics and beautification for our city. So. Motion to this Mayor doesn't kill us financially. I'm for it. Okay, just a second. We have someone speaking on it. Mr. Kim. Again, it looks like the city didn't have a plan. Why they couldn't do? Why they couldn't do when they have a RFP process? They're just adding up. And also, Cesar Chavez's construction is it's been delayed. It's all the mess over there. We're on target, Mr. Kim. Yes, we're on target. Yes. yes. It's, it's Cesar Chavez, they are, they are, they are, they've been delayed. It. Why are they supposed to be delayed? It? And the, this company, we pay for them more. It looks like a, I, I thought it's going to be. Excuse me. It's uh, come from this company. Now I found it during the donation from the, our staff. It didn't add up that, and we probably have a maybe better idea. But we do. We need to do some due diligence to make the RFP process right. And same things. Don't do. Don't make the mistake like uh, delaying the, the, the street. When I was uh, when we, when I was mayor, uh, we were approving domain the MNF domain. I was uh, pushing to pay them to get the uh, deal faster. And now we has uh, we had a long term of the long time of the delaying the process. We pay a lot of professional people that what of the community. We could do a lot easier, faster if we had to deal with the people who's engaged. So same things. So our council needs a tavern on our step to diligent to the has best out of from the 
work performance. Thank you. Okay, taking item number uh, 14. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah 14. 14. Motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Mr. Hodge seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item 15. Authorize city manager to sign agreement for professional services between the city of Calexico, the Holt Group, Inc., to provide engineering and inspection services for 2019 street improvement overlay project. Mr. Dale. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, as, we, as I mentioned in the city manager's report, we are finishing up this year, it was calendar years, basically, uh, Measure D project. Will the uh, asphalt will be completed in the next month or so? And also, we, as you recall, we the city got, has a Measure D bond in the the amount of twelve million dollars. So we have twelve million dollars to spend over the next three to four years to all do additional roadways. And so this this proposal, is, we have our um, on call engineering list and. Uh, we have a couple of proposals. This one uh, from the whole group was the lower proposal and they, they both have the same, um, they're both offering the same thing. So we're recommending to move forward with the whole group uh, incorporated and I, and I feel like this is a uh, good deal for the city. And the yes. fun funding's coming out of the... Uh, I have a speaker, Mayor. I have a comment. Okay. Could we get a, 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 a revised... Uh, plan on what we've done in 2018 and what we're planning to do in 2019 yeah. as far as the streets? The streets okay. haven't changed since we last brought it to you, but we can we can forward that map back to you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Kim? It looks like I have to, I have to apologize for the, our staff. I'm not uh, attacking or singling out of the employees. I'm I'm here to overall better job for our community. And again, at number 15, it looks like we don't have a city employees. We're contracting out, contracting out. A lot of things we can do our own, own self, but we're contracting out. That's why a professional fee is going up and up. Please, to make our city functionable. Why we have to do so much to contract out? <coughs> Maybe th if they don't have ability, we have to hire someone who has ability to do it. And we got some, so many job issues, and also uh, our the, the street is bad condition. We supposed, uh, last time I was mentioning, we supposed to uh, multiple project can be done by the company to construction company. Why we have to hire a consultant to managing those programs? So they cannot do their job. And why they there? Thank you. <clears throat> Item 15. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Can I, can I just uh, take 30 seconds just to say this? Um, so people understand the, the city has to outsource um, many things because the cost of hiring somebody and actually uh, paying um, uh, uh, insurance benefits and, and all those things, it, it, I mean, you, you just can't do that. The city has to outsource a lot of the stuff it does and it doesn't make sense to hire every single person that comes and works for the city because, I mean, you'd go broke. <laughs> But um, just just so the people watching can understand that that it's it's normal. Every city outsources things, and um, you know it's uh, it is what it is. So, thank you. Item 16: Discussion and potential action regarding consulate of Mexico request for the waiver of temporary use permit filing fee for farm workers' fare and breakfast. I'll make a motion to approve. I think this is something that they come for every year. Second. And, you know. So I. All those in favor? Aye. 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 17 is pretty much Item the same 17 thing. 17 reads, discussion potential action regarding Consulate Mexico again, request for waiver, temporary use permit, filing fee for 
Lazos Rosa by National Walk for Breast Cancer Awareness for both sides of the border. Motion to approve. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. What's left? Uh, the item 18. That one's on me. We're going to appoint to the Sentinel State Prison Advisory. We had to twist his arm, but he said, okay, Diego Pavila, our chief, will be our appointee to this committee, advisory committee. Chief, is that okay? Yes, sir, You're also you. coming out on the talent show tomorrow, right? No? <laughs> <laughs> All the, we don't need to vote on that. Point it. Any, uh, anything for future items? I, I have a, I have a, it's not necessarily a future item because it already happened, but it hasn't been implemented the right way and it's probably two years in the making. Um, so one day uh, I'm in El Centro, um, at City Hall in El Centro, and I, I, I see that as I'm making line, they have a TV there showing the citizens as they're paying their water bill. Um, everything the city's doing as far as street maintenance and, and you name it, things that they've bought. So I come back, I tell Armando Villa, I say, hey, I think that's a great idea. We get the TV, we put it up there, it's there, but it's showing the news. It's not, it wasn't, it wasn't brought for that. Um, I mean, I'm sure we, we have IT people. I'm sh I think we should have somebody in the city that knows, um, put in a USB with pictures and it, 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 sh it should be showing the citizens that um, I can. I know for a fact uh, that we have done more for streets and sidewalks yeah. and and spending the spending the monies, the taxpayers' monies wisely, so. redoing a lot of streets. What's happening in Cesar Chavez and everything? What we're doing. Um, projects what we're doing, we're on. and that should be screaming to the people that are paying their bill. Hey, look, as I'm waiting here, okay, well, my money's being used wisely. Good. We have it on CNN or Fox News or things like that, but. Um, I think it's it's it, you know that's it's a no-brainer that that's what it should be there for. So um, if we can get a move on that, that would be that would be great. Um, and that's about it. I mean, there's a lot more stuff, but <laughs> well, on, yeah. that's baby steps, baby steps. I agree. Yeah. I just want to thank Ms. Falomir for uh, doing all the work we did to the guys and setting up the monument. Would you stand up, please? So I know you did no? a lot of work. Yeah, Liliana Falomir. Yeah, yeah. I love Thank you. you. I love For all you do. I won't finish it. She loves the attention. She loves that. She loves the attention. That's what we do. Thank you. All right. Time to go. Thank you. Thank you for coming.